This lesson we're going to take a look at the surface areas of pyramids and of cones. And the first thing I'm going to look at is just all the different pieces that uh, make up a pyramid. Many of these pieces I'm hoping you can look at and say, well, I already know what that is. For example, if I look at this red piece, that's going to be the height or the altitude of my pyramid. The blue face that's right here, that's one of the lateral faces. The yellow face that's down here on the, it looks like it's on the bottom. Now, I don't think that that face always has to be on the bottom because it could be on the top. That's going to be the base of the pyramid. This edge right here that looks like it's kind of brown in color, being it's the intersection of the two of the lateral faces, that's going to be a lateral edge. I'm going to go up here to the very point. It's referred to as a vertex. Um, it could also be referred to as the apex. So put that next to this as well. I'm going to come in here and type that in. Or apex. You'll hear it referred to as that from time to time as well. Draw that out bigger. There we go. And then last but not least, we have this green piece here. Now, the other thing on that green piece that should have a little right angle symbol in here, because that's going to be perpendicular to that, that edge down here. Now, think of this. What is that in the triangle? Well, it's the height of the triangle. So in the pyramid, it's referred to as the slant height. And I think of it as the slant height because that, that face there is kind of slanted. So they give it the name, the slant height. And you're going to find out that to be important when looking at the surface area of the pyramid. So those are all the pieces of the pyramids that we need to know. Now my next one is going to be looking at the surface area of a right cone. Now most of the time I tell you to take the figure and pull it apart and draw the net. Now for a cone, that gets a little tricky. Um, you could try to think about it, maybe push pause and think about what uh, the net of a, or a cone would look like. But if you actually unfold it, the net of a cone is going to be the circular base. That's probably the easy part, but then it's that cone part. What does that look like? And here's just one example. I like to think of it as uh, a big Miss Pac-Man. You got Pac-Man here and then her bonnet. Now this part is going to change from cone to cone. Um, it might look like this. It might look more and more like Miss Pac-Man has her mouth almost closed. And then there's some of the cases where I call it the dying Miss Pac-Man, where this actually gets really, really small and it just keeps wrapping around. So it's all going to depend on uh, what kind of cone you have and the dimensions of it. So to find the area of it, I think it's not going to be too hard to figure out the area of the circle part. That's going to be pi r squared. But then we're going to have to add on the cone part. And that's the tricky part. Um, you can look at it as, yes, it's a sector. Um, and we do know how to find the area of the sector. We need to know, call it the radius of the, the sector, which would be actually the slant height of the cone. And that's a piece that you could find out. But then you'd also need to be able to find the measure of this angle. And that's the part that gets really hard, because when you go to the three-dimensional figure over here, well, this angle that I just marked on my sector doesn't really exist in the three-dimensional figure. So we're not going to have that information. Therefore, we need basically another formula that you just have to remember. So to find the area of the sector part, you're going to use pi r, and it's the same radius as it is in the other one. It's the radius of the base, and then it's times l. Now, this l here, that is your slant height. similar to the slant height in a pyramid that we just talked about. So this is a little formula that you just have to implant into your brain. This part shouldn't be bad because that's the circle. And then this part here, that's the, the cone part of it. So keep that in mind. Another little formula that unfortunately you're just going to have to remember when uh, trying to find the surface area of a cone or if it gives you the surface area and asks you to find uh, the radius or the slant height, you'll be able to use that. That's going to conclude the, the lesson portion on surface areas of pyramids and of cones.